Okay, cool. So yeah, I worked day to day with Angular and JavaScript. Um, I write a lot of functional code. You guys might remember me and Kevin talking before about functional JavaScript with uh, Rambo, which is pretty cool. But today I'm just going to talk about like, a really cool thing. It's like a new hotness for us and our team, and we, we really love using it. Um, and it's just basically a way to clean up your scripts um, and basically helping you document things, helping people down the line that might your code. With, with this script. We could touch a little bit on literate programming, but that's more just about a cool new thing. And so I have a solution, so I had to make up the problem. This is not necessarily a problem. <laughs> um, the, the problem for us was we had like really long one-liner statements in our package JSON files, like in the scripts. And sometimes they, they're hard to know what's going on. So I think you really want to maybe comment that or write some documentation about it. Um, but that typically doesn't happen. And the next person that comes and he needs to read that, it actually doesn't know what's going on because it's quite complicated. Um, future maintenance of the project have no clue and they need to come back to you and ask. So we've got a service desk sort of department and they struggle with this quite a lot because they're not like JavaScript developers per se, but they get stuck with a JavaScript project and they end up like struggling with all the things like this. Okay, so, so the obvious like, solution I'm sure everyone's done it is this is hard to understand. And then someone goes, okay, you're writing docs. And the guy sits for a day or two and he writes a whole bunch of docs. And they might be accurate, um, they might be cool, but they might not be. Okay? They, they're written as an afterthought, so they might be pretty poor, actually. And they might be like the bare minimum that you need. Um, at the end of the day, when things change in your scripts, that docs, those docs get old, they become stale, um, no one updates them eventually delete them and write new docs, etc. Okay. So, to get around this, wouldn't it be cool if we had like living, breathing documentation? Documentation that you're working all the time. Um, the code that you're talking about is right there next to the thing. Okay? Documentation that's runnable. Cool. So that's, that's sort of where literate programming sort of steps in. Like sort of the two, it's this intermingling of the code and your documentation in sort of one place. So the documentation are, in like our case, maybe our build scripts, um, and the scripts are the documentation. They're, they're one thing, they live together, they change together. They don't become stale. The one doesn't become stale after the other. Okay, cool. So the next question is like, okay, like we're writing a uh, documentation, what are we going to write it in? I don't know. Someone might say Word or uh, I don't know or ASCII art um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, sticks and mud, I don't know. So you, the, the, <laughs> the obvious one is Markdown, it's the de facto. Um, if you've been on GitHub uh, at any point, you would have seen Markdown already. Um, Microsoft, all of their docs are on Mark, on GitHub in Markdown. So if a company like that's adopting it, that's the you can start adopting it. If you haven't written mark, has anyone not written markdown here before? Cool. So it's it's a really just simple markup language for being able to write like documentation essentially. So if you want to bold something, it's you just wrap uh, stars around it. If you want something to be a heading, you just have a hash in front of it and etc. Things are not. So markdown really has support for code blocks inside of it, um, but we just need the ability to run those code blocks. Okay, so you, you might have seen in like examples that you, you, you read this example and oh this is how you do it and here's the code example. We want to run those, okay? And this is where made steps in. So made is actually like super duper simple. It's just like a command line tool that allows you to run the code that's inside the markdown file. Okay? So you write your scripts inside of your docs and then you use English to describe how your code is going to run, okay? How uh, your one script interacts with the other, uh, and so on and so on. Cool, so that sounds great, um, but it, does, it sounds weird and hard, and maybe something to learn, but it's actually not. If you know Markdown, you really know how to do it. Then you really have the script. And it actually comes down to two really simple things. The first thing is, uh, your script name is just the H2. That's what, you, that's what you're going to use to run, run the piece of code. And your code is always inside of triple backticks. And if you don't know what backticks are, let me show you now. So 
now sort of the time to jump into this really scary part of this because uh, demos never go well in my experience. Okay, cool. Because you see on the left here, I've just got a demo directory. Um, I've got a made file in there, made file.md uh, markdown file. And on the right, this is the, the demo one um, sort of markdown file. And we can see we've got two sections here. We've got a test section and we've got a linting section. And we've got some, just an explanation, essentially our documentation. To do a preview of it, it's nice and pretty. Uh, you could put a badge here and get some, like, I don't know, what are they called? Like, some sort of reputation on GitHub because you've got, like, a build status and it's awesome. I'm super CI. So you could put that there. But now my code is here and I've commented. I've got, I've got living code, actually. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. So the first thing you're going to need is you're going to need made. So you're going to use made like this. If you don't have it, obviously you're just going to. Uh, npm install, you can install it globally and you can install made like that. Uh, you can install it as a dev dependency and run it in certain ways. So now we can, we can execute made, we can use it. So the first thing we do is we say, okay, made help me. <laughs> Someone must deserve this to their made. Okay, cool. So made say, okay, cool, like, well this is what, what we know how to do. We know how to test things, and test runs with the client test, and then to make sure that the code follows coding conventions. Okay, so cool, this is like a man page. But now, we can do things, we can run things. So, let's test. Okay, ran our, ran our test. Really super simple. So you can see in the output chair, we started test. We um, ran our really thorough tests. And, <laughs> and, and we can see our 100% code, yeah, there's actually no code, so. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> okay, good. And we've got some outputs, we see how long it ran, etc. Okay. And similarly, we could lint our code. This actually, yeah, I just did a install of Angular, just to see. That was quite quick work. It wasn't quite good, it was There's literally no code in there. <laughs> oh, no, I like it. Okay, cool. But this is like this is super basic, like, or you could just use, um, you know, just a script and npm file. That's not the point. It's just to show you how the basics of how it works. So in our second demo, we'll go a little bit further. Okay. So again, we've got the same sort of commands. We've got test, and we've got uh, lint, and we've got the same code blocks. But now, uh, in our team, we always like to run our linting before our tests. Okay. So this is something that you usually put inside of your, you know, your scripts, but why not just document it? Why don't you make that explicit? So in made, if we say, okay, well, it lints everything, it lints and tests, whatever, we're going to say, okay, well, this test command also runs the lint task for it. Okay? So now, just go to our demo and say made test. It's going to automatically, you see there, the starting linting. It's going to take ages because of Angular. And then it's going to complete. So it ran the test after the linting. So these are things that are in our documentation. We're using the English language to explain how our, how our, how our build scripts interact and work together. We're not relying on tribal knowledge to know, oh, yeah, they, they run, this one runs after that one, and so on. It's actually it's document. And if we look at our preview again, it's still pretty. We're missing our badge. Okay. Still, it's like it's quite basic. Um, this, the before keyword and surrounding the back text. That's the key. Okay, so runs task before after this. That's what you need to say. Okay. So, so if we go to demo three. Cool. So we'll get a little bit, a little bit more fancy. So now, and after doing we've got some little bit of yeah. We've got um, some install scripts. Again, they're like super basic, it's just npmi, okay? But we're just installing things for our client, and we're installing things for our server, okay? So we've got an API and we've got an Angular client, okay? 
we can just group those together if we want them to happen together. So we've got an install command. And that says, okay, well, it installs all the dependencies, both the client and the server. And it runs task install client and install server in parallel. Okay? So if I run, this is going to be interesting, so I'm probably going to whack my mobile device. Uh, <laughs> so if I run install, you see how it's starting them together in parallel. And it's going to run my install like that, which is cool, nice and easy. And similarly, if I wanted to like maybe start things together, so I've got start client, start server. Again, I'm going to start them up together in parallel. Runs the task in parallel, and it explains exactly what it's doing. So, send me help. We've got our man page. This explains exactly what you do. You get this project, you've never seen it before. Like, how nice to say like, hey, like, what's going on? How do I do this? That's how you do it. Look at the read the docs and run the docs. So it's a pretty cool thing. So if we start things up, start. Cool. So it started the API, and then Angular will take two hours. So like <laughs> um, <laughs> it's fast, and it's like okay, just uh, copy this. And then, so um, you can run these scripts also in isolation. So you just want to start the server. You could do that. You can just run uh, made. This one run Angular. So, you can do that too. Okay. So yeah, it's pretty simple, but uh, I'll, I'll go one step further. Okay. So usually what happens is you, you get to this point, you're like this is really cool and it's really handy, but I've already got a readme file. Like, I don't want a made file. I don't, I don't. I don't need an extra markdown file. I just want my readme file to be my file. Okay. Well, you can really easily do that. Um, so now we've got a readme file. You see the ls there in the top left. Okay. So I did not before. It's just our readme. You're like, hey, cool. Like we've got a cool readme file. It's show to this over here. Awesome. <laughs> so we've got some nice descriptions here. We've got an intro. So really point this really, did you get the idea? And then we have a script section. So all you need to do is, oh, where's my, go away. Okay, cool. So all you need to do to tell Maid now, okay, I just need to tell you like where my scripts are in my markdown file. You just stick this comment here, um, Maid toss. And then the only other difference is that instead of the, the H2, the two hash, hashtags, it's gonna be um, the three. Okay, that's only good. So again, if we say, may it help? Okay, we, we have the exact same task from the previous one, because I just copy paste the thing. But um, it works all the same, okay? So this is how you can actually start moving this in into your readme and start using it. Okay, there's, there's no real like barrier to entry at all. Okay, good. We'll go back to slides. Okay, cool. So like the next thing is like maybe you are a JavaScript reader from other things. You might not like Bash. So just use JavaScript. You can do that. So if you just say, okay, well this code box is JS, it'll work, you can run it. You can also the blog things. Um, you can even use like async await. Um, it gets a bit funky now because you have to export it and whatever. You can use async await. You can also <laughs> you can also like require things. Um, yeah, so you could use JavaScript. Or like if you like maybe hate yourself or something, you could use Python. I don't know if I'll throw that in there if you want to use it, it's there. <laughs> so you've got a few options. Typically you're not you're writing in that. You got the options. Okay, cool. So sort of in closing, uh, if you're on Windows, you're gonna need to use Git Bash to run this, or Windows subsystem for Linux. Uh, it's not just gonna work in the corner. Uh, with a normal command line. Um, and you can use your readme file as we saw. And you can pass arguments to your task. Like, it's actually really easy. So if you just go look at the docs, you'll see that's really easy to do. Uh, it just depends on what language you're writing the script in. But um, yeah, that's it. Cool. Any questions?